Hello and welcome back to our pushable block series. In this third episode, we're going to go through the constraints on our block. So our block is going to have a load of rules about when and where it can move. So we're going to go through our can push function and add some extra uh, conditions for our pushing. So let's get started. So our next challenge with the pushable block is we want to make it so that we can't push it off of ledges. So it can be blocked by walls, but we also want to make it so it can't push off, off ledges. So case in point, the problem we have is if we keep pushing, it just flies until we let go. Okay, so which is obviously not what we want. So we're going to make it so it does a check as well to see if there's a floor for it to land on afterwards. So we're going to go back to our can push function. We'll go back into here. And we're going to go on this box trace by channel and we're going to do that into our branch here. If it's false, we're going to put in false there and turn off can push. If it's true though, we're going to do another line trace. And it can be a line trace if you want, or a box trace, whatever you want to do. Um, let's do a line trace by channel. And this is going to go to the end point of where this is going to go and project down. So the start position is actually going to be the end position of this box trace. So if I take this end position here, copy that, and put that down here, this is actually the start position of our line trace. The end point of this is exactly the same, except we're going to make it go down. So we're going to add here, and we'll do negative, I don't know, 200. And we'll put that into a branch there. And we'll get our return node, copy, and paste this. If it's true, and we do hit something, then we can push, it's going to be true. Otherwise, we're going to turn can push to be false. So let's now go back into here, and let's see if we can push this thing off the edge of our ledge here. So it still can, and that's probably down to where the box collision, the line trace is happening for the box collision. So I'm going to add a little bit more distance to it. So that start position there, we're going to add on our travel distance. We're going to, let's multiply this by another float. And let's do 1.5 in that. And I'll do a debug on it so you can see what it looks like. So for duration. And go push play. So when I'm pushing this one, uh you're not gonna see it because you can see uh, you can see the old line appearing. Yeah, you can see where they are if you look closely enough there. So if we double check this one, I can't push it. Okay. It won't let me. And you see the line trace there going down, it's therefore not hitting the floor, therefore it won't let me push this thing off the ledge. Um, let's move it back here so you can see it being pushed a little bit and then stop. Okay, it can no longer push this off the ledge. But if I was to push this one to that, I could push it on top. Okay, and go back up here. There we go. But I say I can't push it any more further. Uh, so the other issue you may have on here is you don't want to be able to push this if you've got something on top of it, because this would happen. Yeah, we don't want that to happen. Um, and that works exactly the same way. You just do another line trace up to make sure there's nothing above you. So you just do another line trace. So you see it's like a chain of line traces that you're just doing loads of little traces to see if you can actually move this block around. Um, so this again gone the true bar here. Line trace by channel. This one's a little bit simpler. This one's just the actor location as the start point, and the end point is actor location plus a z value here of let's say I don't know two hundred. Okay, this goes up by two hundred, and if that is in a branch there, 
if it's true, we want it to not be pushable. So again, push is uh, false there. And if it's false, we make that true. So to test that out a bit quicker, I'm just going to move this one, this side of things. Okay, let's push this one on top. Uh, oh, it's hitting the floor. I forgot the actor location is actually at the base, not the middle as I thought it'd be. So I do have to make ten into account. Um, let's just add this to be the start then, and the end point will be this plus another vector of another two hundred. That should be enough. Try that again. Because if you remember back in the first episode, I put this box at above the roots. The roots are actually on the floor here. Um, so I put it there, no problem. And I can't push this one because this one's on top of it, weighing it down, essentially. Okay. Um, but you do have this issue where you can jump up and do that. So the issue that we now need to solve is can our player push, i.e. do we have floor beneath our player? So let's go back to our pushable block object. And let's go to here. Again, following the, the path to where it says to can push is true, we're going to put another condition in. And this will be whether the player character can find the floor. Or it always on the floor. So get player character. And we'll do is falling. And we'll put that into a branch. And put that there. And if they're falling, we want can push to be false. If they are not falling, we want it to be true. So now I shouldn't be able to jump up and start pushing. Okay. I can still push here. Maybe I'll block this out of the way here. Now I can push this around more freely. Excellent. Okay, brilliant. Um, so now we've got loads of conditions being put in place for when we can and can't push this block. So let's now go back to our block here. Just make tidy this thing up a little bit because there's quite a lot going on here. So let's break it apart and slow it way down here. So uh, we're going to make a local verb in here called can push. Local can push. Push. And this is going to be false, uh, true by default. Okay. So in the can push, we're going to do a sequence for each one of these. And if you manage to get through all the sequences without changing can push to false, the final output in the sequence will be to re return it. So the first sequence here, we're going to drag out and it'll be here. And the return value for this is going to be, uh, oh, it's here. And can push here is false. I'm going to replace this with the local can push. So the false there. Let's get the true. And that's all I want there. Okay. Um, yeah. Next, we're going to take out the hit actor going into this. And this is going to be determining the, the block itself. Okay. So what are we hitting and whether the block here is the one we are outputting as well. So we can put that into true and return node here. We can again put the local can push to false. So next we've got the box trace. Um, so I'm just going to true there. And this will be the second on the sequence. So let's just trace this first of all uh, with a comment and do uh, one check player and uh, player is facing box. Okay, just change the size out so you can see what I'm doing there. Like so. The box trace is going to check their space for the box to go to. So we're going to take all this, 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 and we're going to put this in a comment. 
and the comment for this is to check if box has room to move. I'm going to that sequence there. And not we're going to return node, we're just going to change through the local cam push to false. Next, we've got the uh the access location checking if the floor. I think that's the floor. Uh yeah, if there's floor where it's gonna be going. So I want to take this and that and that. Let's get that, move it around here. And three, check if space has floor. Change that to 100, make it nice and clear for you guys. And I'll move that back into the sequence there. Do that. Okay, so one, check players facing box. Two, check the box has room to move. Three, check if the space has floor. Um, and again, that return node we're going to get rid of and replace with our local can push. Set that to false. Okay, next, uh, it's going to do the check for uh, if there's anything above it. So I'm going to take this, 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 and disconnect the false there. And we'll do another kind of box around that. And that'd be check number four. Check if anything on top of box. Make it nice and big, easy for you guys to read and see. And plug that into another sequence pin. Like so. Uh, and yep, we're gonna return node, we're gonna replace with our local cam push. And finally, we've got one more, which is somewhere, there it is. Drag that over here. And this will be checking whether the player can is falling or not. Uh, so we'll plug that into another sequence. Okay. And again, changing the returner that's false here to the local cam push instead. The return node being true here, though, we're going to take that out of there. And instead, we're going to put it onto another sequence pin right at the top here. And we'll return local cam push. Because it starts off as true, if you manage to get through all of these sort of hurdles without being changed to false, then it'll be allowed to push. So I just have to comment this one. Uh, number five, check if player is not falling. And we'll just change the size of that to match the others. There we go. So we've got five checks going on here before it returns the value. The first check, we're checking if the player's facing the box. Two, we're checking if the box has room to move. Three, we're checking if the, uh, the space has floor. Four, we're checking if the, anything on top of the box. And five, we're checking if the player is not falling. And with all those checks in place, if we push that now, we should be still working okay, as we intend to. Excellent. And there we go. We've got a pushable block with a load of restrictions on it. It makes it look really nice, really fluid, and I'm really pleased with the final outcome. However, there's one final thing that we want to do on here, and that's add some animations to our character so they can be animated going into pushing and coming out of their pushing of this block. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. You can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. Thanks to all my patrons and my YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.